In this episode, Direct3D coming to Linux, Migo has been hacked to run on the Nexus One, and Oracle is releasing their own unbreakable Linux kernel. Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcasts.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 11, Episode 10. From LinuxDevices.com, we have a story, Linux Ready, System on a Chips, SIP Half a Watt. This is pretty neat. Freescale Semiconductor has announced a Linux Ready ARM9 based uh, System on a Chip and Cold Fire based uh, MCU, both targeting fanless industrial applications as well as automotive systems. Uh, each of the two chips consume less of a half a watt each and support extended temperatures. They, uh, they offer clock synchronizing Ethernet and some in some models a layer two switch uh, for low cost daisy chaining, that sort of thing. This is pretty neat stuff. Uh, you, obviously, you can run Linux on it. And um, they've got lots of information here. If you're into embedded or industrial type designs, this is definitely worth something checking out. Let's talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable, can appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast, you'll be, you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or giving a tutorial or doing whatever it is you need to do within seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From VizWorld, uh, Direct3D 10 and 11 is now natively coming to Linux. Uh, the post here, ma some major news on the Linux graphics front this weekend coming from some developers of the Gallium 3D project. Over the weekend, Luca Barberi committed code adding a DirectX 10 and 11 state tracker to the project offering some basic DX 10 and 11 support. It's far from feature complete, but it's the first steps towards bringing the popular Windows-based gaming API to Linux. So this will be pretty cool. Um, hopefully, if they can replicate the API behind the scenes, that would be cool. That'd be pretty awesome. But it's going to be a while before this actually is going to, you know, end up being something all that uh, particularly useful, but still nonetheless, pretty neat stuff. From mobileputing.com, Mego Linux hacked to run on Google, Nexus One, and other Android phones. Now, we've reported on Mego before. It's a lightweight uh, Linux uh, environment designed to run on netbooks, smartphones, and car computers, you name it. If it's tiny and small, Mego supposedly should run on it. Well, source code for the smartphone version of the OS was released a few months ago. Even though you can't actually walk in and buy a phone that has Mego on it just yet. But uh, it's been um, hacked to uh, run on existing the existing Nexus One. Um, anything that ha is has uh, anything in common with the Qualcomm Snapdragon QSD 8250 chipset uh, should work with uh, minimal tweaking. So uh, if you want to run Mego on uh, an older phone that you've had for a while, go for it. From Linux PR, Concurrent announces availability of Red Hawk Linux. Nightstar development tools for CUDA-enabled hardware. Now, CUDA-enabled hardware is NVIDIA's CUDA 
graphics chipsets where you have a, a GPU, a general purpose, uh, general execute. It's basically you can do generic uh, processing on the graphics processing unit of the GPU. Well, Concurrent, a leading provider of real-time Linux operating systems, has integrated software and compiler solutions for mission-critical applications. They have announced that Concurrent's Red Hawk Linux and uh, Nightstar apps and their development tools are now available on GE Intelligent Platform's graphics processing units. Concurrent software delivers enhanced performance for the rugged military and aerospace markets served by GE Intelligent Platform GPUs. So... Cool stuff. Uh, by all means, check it out. Can't go wrong. More processing power, the better. From Information Week, Oracle has released the unbreakable, and I use this in double quotes, unbreakable Linux kernel. Oracle has launched a version of the Linux kernel called the Unbreakable Enterprise Kernel, optimized for running Oracle software on Oracle hardware under Oracle's version of Linux. Uh, formerly called Oracle Enterprise Linux with its uh, support program known as Unbreakable Linux. The Oracle distribution has been renamed Oracle Linux with customers having the option of choosing a lookalike version of, of Red Hat Enterprise Linux or one of the Oracle modified Unbreakable kernel at its core. The uh, term Unbreakable has no precise significance among Linux developers. It's an Oracle marketing term. So, uh, what? Oracle, what are you doing? <sighs> Okay, fine. Oracle is very quickly going down the path of being a very Oracle proprietary, despite the fact that they say that they're open source. Not that the two are related. One is licensing terms, and the other one is specific to a company. But still, nonetheless, I find it very disturbing. From AdvertiserTalk.com, Linux Certified announces its next Linux kernel internals training course. Um, it's a two-day hands-on course. It, it provides attendees with experience in creating Linux kernel source code within various subsystems of the Linux kernel. The course teaches attendees to acquaint developers with the fundamental subsystems, data structures, and API of the Linux kernel. The class is scheduled for November 10th and 11th, 2010. Um, to enroll and for more and for more details, visit linuxcertified.com forward slash class underscore schedule dot html i will have this article linked up in the show notes so by all means feel free to uh, go check it out linux.quicksurf.com from small business computing cisco rolls out new linux switches for small business networks over the course of the last two years networking vendor cisco has been upgrading and expanding its small business networking offerings that effort continues this week with the launch of a new lineup of managed switches and updated voip phones specifically geared for small business networking environments among the new products is the cisco 300 series of managed switches which expands cisco's small business switching portfolio beyond the unmanaged 100 series which debuted earlier this year so uh, the 300 series uses the Linux operating system instead of Cisco's enterprise iOS operating system. And uh, Linux offers a key differentiator when it comes to targeting small business needs because they can do stuff and program things into the GUI for it and all that other neat jazz. So uh, pretty neat stuff. Check it out. That's pretty much it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Visit us on the web at linux.quickstuff.com. Uh, you can uh, subscribe. I've got all the subscribe links. You can do video, audio, MP3, Ogvorbis, you name it. Um, or if you're on blip.tv or YouTube, you, some, you can subscribe from there as well. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. I will see you then. Bye.